In Singapore, a key member of the PAP Old Guard and former cabinet minister, Mr. Jack Yuan Tong, died peacefully at home on Sunday. He was 88. A statement from the Prime Minister's office said Mr. Jack was one of the 10 ministers who signed the separation agreement in 1965. The statement added that Mr. Jack served in multiple capacities in the cabinet and public service and contributed significantly to the building of modern Singapore. Mr. Jack's family held a private wake and funeral in fulfillment of his wishes. The funeral took place yesterday. The Singapore government has extended its deep condolences to Mr. Jack's family. And as a mark of respect and in recognition of Mr. Jack's contributions to the nation, the government has ordered the estate flag on all government buildings to be flown at half-mast tomorrow. And Singapore's Prime Minister Lee Hsien Long has extended his deepest condolences to Mr. Jack's wife. Mr. Lee highlighted Mr. Jack's many contributions, saying his passing is a deep loss to the nation. Mr. Lee said throughout Mr. Jack's years in public service, he made notable contributions and demonstrated a strong sense of dedication to the nation. Mr. Lee recalled that when he first entered politics in 1984, Mr. Jack was still a member of parliament for a Queenstown constituency, and he described Mr. Jack as friendly and generous when he interacted with the younger MPs. When Mr. Lee Kuan Yew retired as Prime Minister in 1990, Mr. Jack was conferred the Order of Nila Utama to recognise his political, diplomatic and social contributions to Singapore. Jack Yong Tong was born in 1930. It was during the time Singapore was part of the Straits Settlements under British rule, together with Penang and Malacca. Jack, who attended the Chinese high school during the early years of his education, was drawn to politics even as a student. An activist, he led the student union and edited a wall newspaper. He also joined a student communist cell and the anti-British league. As he got older, he drifted away from communist principles, but his activism got him into trouble with the British authorities. In 1950, they expelled him from school and placed him on a blacklist. He was 20. Four years later, Jack joined the Chinese newspaper Sinpao before being drawn into politics again the following year. It was 1955. Jack joined the People's Action Party, or PAP. His good relations with the Chinese ground proved essential to the PAP in the 1955 Legislative Assembly general election. 1957 saw his appointment to PAP's Central Executive Committee, or CEC, as political secretary. But later that year, the Lim Yu Hock government detained him for sedition under the Internal Security Act. In April 1958, Jack was released and back in politics as secretary to Mayor Ong Eng Guan in the city council. But he resigned the following year to help the PAP campaign in the general election in May 1959. When the party came into government after the elections, Jack was appointed political secretary to Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew. He held the position from 1959 to 1963 as well as the post of CEC's assistant treasurer and later treasurer until 1976. Jack also held other critical leadership positions in the PAP. In 1960, they appointed him the government representative for the Joint Government University Liaison Committee to reform Nanta, short for Nanyang University. Officially opened in 1958, it was Singapore's only Chinese-language post-secondary institution. Concerned about the proximity of Nanta graduates with the Barisan Socialists, Jack was instrumental in merging Nanta with the Singapore University to become the National University of Singapore in 1980. 1961 thrust Jack into battle in the Hong Lim by-election. He ran against his former boss, Ong Eng Guan, and lost. Undeterred, Jack fought again two years later. This time, he stood in the Legislative Assembly general election in September 1963 and was elected as the Assemblyman for the Queenstown constituency. 
He held this seat for the next 25 years until he retired from politics in 1988. The PAP's victory in the 1963 general election also led to Jack's appointment as Minister for Labour. Jack was also one of the cabinet ministers who signed the historic separation agreement in 1965 when Singapore parted ways with Malaysia. From the moment I signed the agreement, I knew that the road ahead would be challenging. The initial years of our nation building were not easy, but everyone believed in a single cause to make Singapore a better home for ourselves and our children. Through sheer grit and determination, we came to where we are today. As Minister for Labour, his first task was to reform the trade unions which had been taken over by communist sympathisers. The 1960s had been a time of frequent labour disputes. Jack had to introduce controversial policies such as the requirement for Malaysians to apply for work permits in order to work in Singapore. In 1968, he introduced the Employment Act, which allowed employers to control promotions, staff transfers and retrenchment exercises. The Act also reduced public holidays and increased working hours for white-collar workers on par with those of blue-collar workers. Jack outlined in a speech to Parliament, We're a pro-Labour government and we want to make everything easy for the workers. But on the other hand, we must also protect the interests of the employers so that they're not unduly persecuted and do not start running away. Jack was a strong advocate for developing a Singaporean identity. He outlined the new independent nation's foreign policy outlook in a speech to the International Labour Organization in 1966. We seek to be friends with all, to establish cordial and fraternal relationships, particularly in the field of trade and industrial development. While our natural affinity is with countries in Afro-Asia, whose leaders have successfully arrived for independence against colonialism and who now seek to establish a new social order and a more just and prosperous society than the ones they have inherited. We also seek friendship with any country which can make a contribution to our security and which can assist us in our economic development. In 1968, Jack was made Minister for Culture a position he held for 11 years. In this role, Jack promoted Asian art and values as a cultural ballast against what he saw as Western decadence. As deputy chairman of the People's Association from 1971 to 1977, he endorsed and supported the organizing of photography contests, art exhibitions, and calligraphy contests. From 1976 to 1980, Jack held the post of Minister for Science and Technology concurrently with his Minister for Culture portfolio. On top of this, he was appointed Singapore's High Commissioner to the United Kingdom in 1977 and in 1978, Ambassador to Denmark. In 1980, he left the Cabinet as part of the PAP's party renewal but remained a Member of Parliament until 1988. Jack's long and faithful service to the country earned him the prestigious Order of Nila Utama Second Class in 1990. And at Singapore's Golden Jubilee celebrations in August 2015, Jack was one of three Old Guard ministers who were honoured. Seeing the citizens as well as my younger comrades, I feel that Singapore has a great future because we are united and we have the spirit of perseverance. I believe Singapore will be able to overcome any difficulties and prosper. <laughs>